Dios te bendiga en esta mañana a cada uno de ustedes que nos están acompañando. Queremos saludar a todas las personas que se están conectando en este momento y queremos que estén en contacto con nosotros. that's going to hear your word that you would touch the hearts in a special way God and that we may understand that for you there is nothing impossible in the name of Jesus we ask you God and we give thanks to you God amen The church of God, God bless you. Friends, brother in Christ, God bless you. We want to tell you this morning that the God who we worship is the God of the impossible, the God that can do amazing things, the God that can transform, the God that can heal the heart that is broken. In the name of Jesus, we believe it. And we invite you to believe in the same God. God bless you. Church of God. Congregation, a big hug to all of you. We miss you so much here. And once again, God bless you. Let us sing to the Lord our God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, gracias, Señor. Hallelujah. Invitamos a todos ahí en sus hogares, junto con sus familias. Levanten sus manos. Adoran a Dios junto, aleluya. Yo me rindo a Él. Yo me rindo a Él. Todo a Cristo yo me entrego. Quiero serle fiel. Yo me rindo a él. Oh, yo me rindo a él. Todo a Cristo. Yo me entrego, quiero serle fiel. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. All. To thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. 
to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Yo me rindo a Él. Yo me rindo a Él. Todo a Cristo yo me entrego. Quiero serle fiel. I surrender all. Sing it to the Lord. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Dios sabe lo que hace Él no llega tarde Él no se equivoca Él está en control Oh, oh, oh. Dios sabe lo que hace Aún en lo inexplicable Él es incuestionable Cuando algo en ti determinó oh, oh, oh. Dios sabe lo que hace él conoce los tiempos, no pierdas la esperanza, Él está en control. Dios sabe lo que hace, aunque tú no comprendas, Él es tu fortaleza. En tiempos de aflicción, Dios sabe lo que hace. Él conoce los tiempos, no pierdas la esperanza, Él está en control, Dios sabe lo que hace, aunque tú no comprendas, Él es tu fortaleza, en tiempos de aflicción, Dios sabe lo que hace Dios sabe lo que hace Él no llega tarde Él no se equivoca Él está en control Oh, oh, oh. Dios sabe lo que hace Aún en lo inexplicable Él es incuestionable Cuando algo en ti determinó Oh, Dios sabe lo que hace Él conoce los tiempos No pierdas la esperanza Él está en control Dios sabe lo que hace Aunque tú no comprendas Él es tu fortaleza en tiempos de aflicción, Dios sabe lo que hace. Él conoce los tiempos, 
no pierdas la esperanza Él está en control Dios sabe lo que hace aunque tú no comprendas Él es tu fortaleza en tiempos de aflicción Dios sabe lo que hace Él conoce los tiempos no pierdas la esperanza, Él está en control, Dios sabe lo que hace, aunque tú no comprendas, Él es tu fortaleza en la aflicción, Dios sabe lo que hace. Praise God, hallelujah. God, He knows what He was doing. God has everything under His control. God has that time. The time of working. God has the time to determine what He has begun. God knows. And that is why we're so grateful to God for what God is doing in our lives. Welcome to everyone once again to our service. We're very glad because we're able to come here to our lives here. We're able, wherever you are in this world, in any country, that you're seeing us um, through social media, we are so content because we have been able to reach out to you in your homes. And perhaps we may not know many of you who are watching us right now. But you know what? God knows you. And even in this time of distancing, you know, we still can enter into a spiritual relationship. And we're very content with that. Because truly, like the hypnologist said, you know, that God knows what he was doing. God has everything under his control and this morning may God bless you um, richly and we're here to bring to you uh, the good news of salvation uh, to your home we're going to speak about a very important theme and subject as always God is always glorified in a special way and as you are in your home I want you to join me in opening your Bibles let us go to Psalms 38 verse 21 So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And right there at home, say an amen with me. The Lord can hear you, right? So, the Word of God reads, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Psalms, chapter 38, verse 21. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. The psalmist says, do not forsake me, O oh Lord. My God, be not far from me. Come quickly. Let's go to verse 22. Be quick to help me, O Lord of my salvation. And I'm going to repeat this again. This is a psalm that really got my attention. And we're going to culminate the word that we want to bring to you. The prayer that David did that consists of three different sections that we're going to explain later on. Do not forsake me. Oh, Lord, my God, my God, do not be far from me. Hurry and help me, oh, Lord, my God, my Savior. What a blessing that the Lord may add blessing to his word. And one of the things that God wants to emphasize today about the adversity, um, we have spoken some a while back about the adversity, which requires, you know, a some occurrences or action that is unfavorable for the peoples. And I want to repeat this again. When we talk about adversity, you know, we are referring to an occurrence that it is the result or action that is not favorable to people. And in other words, adversity 
is the adversary of what is good. And I ask you in this way, adversity is the adversary of what is good. And at times, I would say that it is the key that we learn more in our experiences in the valley of tears and, and that in the peak of success. And I'm going to repeat this again. We learn more in our experiences of the valley of tears of our lives. The reason why is that in the valley of tears, we become you know, a little bit more easily to manage. And we're easy to manage, then God is going to work with us. And we don't have to make every single effort or work too hard to, because God is easier, it's easier for God to manage us. So at the peak of success, at the peak of success, not everyone, but at times we become a little bit more arrogant, a little bit more prideful. And in that point of view, it's where God, he has, he distances himself from us because in that arrogance, God sees us from afar. And the Bible says that the person who is, you know, the humble person, that God sees them from close, from near, and the one who is arrogant or boastful of themselves, God will see them from afar. And then the trials, and then a lot of the brokenness, they function as a, a lessons in the school of life. And I'm going to repeat again, the adversities of life, you know, the agony, the pain and the trials, the tribulations, and a lot of the brokenness that we feel, they function for us as, you know, as lessons in the school of life. When I was writing, you know, this message here, I remember my mother, that when, when my mother used, you know, the staff of correction, and a lot of the time my mom had to use correction to provide to us as we were growing up as lessons in the school of life and so that we may be more submitted in that discipline and correction that we receive we receive that correction so that that way we were able to be better behaved because we were able to remember the types of correction that we you know receive and we had to remember the correction that God is doing for our lives and knowing that what is the purpose that God is working through us in all these adverse situations because what they do it play, positions us in the position to be able to to learn about these and adverse uh, situations we learn new understanding and new lessons in our lives and let me tell you something I know it is not easy to go through painful situations in life. And David the psalmist, he expressed that. And and perhaps many people have gotten sick because of this COVID-19 and this plague is going around. And, and I know it's hurtful. It hurts. And at times we had to express that pain so that other people can understand what you are going through. Jesus Christ did it. His time of pain and agony, he expressed what he was feeling. Because the pain that we endure in our lives is the learning that we are able to, to learn from them in our lives so that we can grow. And the perception of, the, of this world and adversity, you know, what they can do is they can alter our perspective of the world and our perspective of God. And what it does, it conducts us or guides us to have a better perspective and relationship with God. And I'm going to say this again. I want you to hear that this is a powerful word. The adversities, they want to alter the perception of the world and our vision of God. That it will take us to change our conduct. And that is why the Lord is our best teacher, you know, and conduct us or guide us in the midst of the valley of tears. And that is, He is the best. He guides us by our hand and at times we don't feel Him. However, God is guiding us, grabbing us by the hand, and taking us with him. And let me tell you something. Did you see, remember about that um, you know, that story um, that we're in the daughter message where you're just seeing footprints on the sand and, and you're asking, where's my footprints at? I only see a set of footprints. Well, and God responds, Jesus responds to this person, well, I'm carrying you, so that's why you don't see your prints there on the sand. And 
And this is a learning experience for us. And say with me, I am in the school of learning. I am learning in the school, in the school of learning. God is has placed us in a school of life or learning. And out of this school, we're going to graduate out of this school with better understanding, a better vision that is more clear-minded. And who is God in our lives? How many say Amen? The Lord is the one who we should, you know, seek refuge in, in order for us to find sense in any adverse situation, and run to the Lord. We're going to learn to find sense and understanding to any situation related to what is happening in our lives. And let me tell you something: that the Lord has the response; He has the solution for what you're going through. So run to the teacher. God allows the adversity for three reasons. I'm going to talk about. There may be more reasons, but I want to speak to you about three reasons why God allows adversity. God uses adversity to get your attention, to capture your attention. And at times we ignore God's voice. At times we don't listen to God. At times we walk an awkwardly driven life, and we have a way going nowhere. And, and God wants us to, you know, He wants to grasp our attention. He wants to get our attention. The Lord uses a variety of elements. I want you to hear this, so that we may pay attention to God when it, you know, seems necessary. And the question is: Is it necessary for God to be trying to grasp the attention of His people? That God is trying to get our attention. God is calling out to us for His redeemed, His believers, His followers. Is God trying to get your attention? How long has it been that you have been disobeying God's voice? How long has it been since you have heard, you know, the voice of God? How long has it been that you've been coming to church but you have not heard what God wants to tell you? So through this adversity in your life, God is capturing. You're or grasping your attention, and I, like, like Peter said, I hope that you reflect in this situation that you are going through, because in this small little monster it seems that is hurting a lot of people and attacking a lot of people, and as you can see that the world is very confused and they don't know what to do. What will happen, you know, in the days of of God when? When God's entire hand falls upon the, upon this earth, what's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to you? May God have mercy. Listen, that God may have mercy. And one of the best ways that I know my personal life to respond to a lot of the adversity that surrounds us, and to the best idea. During these times, is to, you know, search out God's word and depend on God's word because the word of God contains a message for every single one of us, and God's word want to, you know, teach us, you know, a message. I want to take you to Psalms, you know, twenty-five, and I want you to study Psalms twenty-five, verse one through seven. I want you do it as, you know, a task at home. I want you to do it at home, and I want you to reflect on these. I want you to take your Bibles, open your Bibles right now. Is your Bible open? Okay. And the Word of God says, "To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, and in you I trust. O my God, do not let me be put to shame." Psalm twenty-five, verse one through seven. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. But they will put, the, but they will be put to shame, who are treacherous, without excuse. Verse four: Show me your ways, O Lord; teach me your paths; guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. 
Praise God. God is the comfort of every single one of our lives. I want you to hear this. Hear this. These verses. In this time that it seems to be very foggy, um, we are not to give up. Don't give up. Do not give up to worship. But with God's help, we should be able to make every effort to to display and show all of our strength to lift up our hearts to God. And I'm going to repeat this because I want you to hear this word from God. This season of life that it seems to be very foggy and covered in your life, with God's help, we should execute all of our efforts, all of our strength, display it to lift up our hearts to God. And David said, In you I trust, O my God. Psalm 25, verse 2. In the desperation, in the situation that he was experiencing in the midst of that you know, difficult trying time in his life, you are the only one that has the solution for what's happening in my life. Faith is like, you know, it's the bottle that is tied down. It's like the anchor that holds our boat together. And that boat, what it does, it keeps us the anchor uh, and the rope. What it allows us is to get closer to the shore from the, from the um, from the ocean. So what God is doing, He has tied a rope in your life, and He is pulling you in. That is the rope that is taking you to the shore to take you out of the sea. So God is securing us. God is uniting us closer to Him through this rope. Of adversity that is pulling the boat of our lives into the shore, and while the anchor or the of the faith remains firmly, there is no fear of any tempest or storm. While the anchor of faith remains firm, remains tied down. Let me tell you something: there is no fear of any tempest or storm, and this faith, if it fails, then we have no hope. So we should procure that our faith is healthy, that our faith is strong, that in no other way, prayer cannot prevail before God. And that is what the psalmist David said, any heart that is contrite and humble, God will not you know, reject. Come to God with a, a healthy faith and trust before God. Do not, you know, you know go back and forth, you know, be, you know, anchored in. And the thing is that in responding to God, when God acts and God wants to get your attention, do not delay. Do not take too long. When God is trying to get your attention, run to God. Run to Him. Do not delay. It doesn't matter what point in your life you have gone to. Let me tell you something. Run to God. Come to God. Run to Him. Come to Him. Immediately answer to God when God is calling you to get your attention. Come to God with humility, with humbleness. And, and David had a lot of failures before God. David, he made a lot of mistakes, a lot of sins. But he knew and he understood who to come to. He knew that God was there present and available for him. And, and he was waiting for God was. What were the actions, responses that David was going to do? And David made the decision to run to God. He came to run to God. He bowed down to God and said, Lord, a heart that is contrite and humble, you do not reject. He knew who God was. It didn't matter what his circumstance was, his condition was. It doesn't matter for you what condition you're in, what you have done in your life. God is going to forgive you. God is going to lift you up. Run to God. Oh, I feel God's presence in here. That God is telling you that there is hope for you. That God is telling you that in this valley of tears that you are crossing, that God is working with you, that God is getting your attention. Hear what God has to say to you. Pay attention to God, people. You know, close your ears out to all the negativity. Close your ears for all the 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 oppressive you know voices, the, the voices that want to put you down. 
you make your ear available for what God wants to say to you, it's only you and God. You and God personally. God is calling you personally. Don't say my family, my spouse, my friends. No, God is calling you personally. God is calling you. This is individual people. Then comes all the additional blessings that God has for you. And after that, God will bless with your family. Someone in the house needs to get up and they need to get into the forefront and into battle and fight for their family. And secondly, adversity, adversity guides us to examine ourselves. The first thing that God uses adversities for is to get our attention. The second thing that God does when adversity for us to self-evaluate ourselves, to examine ourselves, to search ourselves. And Job said, you know, some words. He said, how can man justify himself with God? And how can a man justify himself with God? In Job chapter 9 verse 2, how would man justify themselves with God? What we need to do, we need to search ourselves. We need to search ourselves. And that's the way we do it. And I am certain that if we search our hearts, we're going to find a lot of things that, that nobody knows. But you know what is in your heart. And God knows what is in your heart. So God allows the adversities to motivate us to do an introspection. And when I speak about the word introspection, we're speaking about a... You know, an evaluation that we had to do of our own self-consciousness. When we're talking about introspection, we're talking about that we had to do an intro um, evaluation of ourselves uh, with the end results of finding something uh, that we can say something is happening in our life. Something has to change in my life. What is it that we need to change in our lives? We need to have a change for us we don't examine ourselves even though we need that change we don't examine ourselves and at times the problem is not you know you know who's next to us the problem is who is around us the problem at times is ourselves so we had to do an introspection of ourselves we had to do an ex you know an exam nation of ourselves an evaluation of ourselves of our consciousness because the one who knows our hearts is God are you still with me church you and I can appear to be spiritual people and we can speak very beautiful and, and um, very attractive and nice words but let me tell you something if there is garbage in our hearts God knows there is garbage Oh God, hallelujah. And many people, and many people, there is a lot of garbage in our hearts. Because we appear to be visibly, appearing to be spiritual. And we do this and we do that. But in our heart, there is a lack of, of, of um, forgiveness, there's arrogance, there's pride, there is murmuring and envy. And you're going to find in our hearts. And that's where God wants to work. That's where God is working in our lives. And what is happening? If I'm praying, if I'm fasting, this is not a question of whether you're going to fast today or this or that. This is a question about, you know, you have to examine your heart. This is not how much you raise your hands. How much you you jump? This is for you to examine your heart, and that is why God wants us to do an introspection, because the winds of adversity, you know, they, you know, taking all of the situations of life that are superficial, the winds of adversity they blow against us, taking away the superficial, you know, situations of our lives. And allows us to confront the reality in a deeper, you know, sense. And no one's ha no one has the capacity to, you know, get us closer to God than adversity. And I'm gonna repeat it again. 
No one has the capacity to grow as closer to God than, than adversity does. Adversity. They make us people who are more loving. And now, when you look at social media, you know, everyone, you know, everyone is, 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 is people on their knees and, and worshiping God. And people, everyone is sending messages, Bible verses. And before, they were putting a lot of garbage into me on, on social media. And now they want to put the word of God. And I want to tell you something because there's, there's a lot of people who are hypocrites. So God is calling us to action, you know. Our hearts, He is. And if there's no tribulation or trials in life, then we don't talk about God. And when there's no trials, when everything is all good, we don't say anything about God. And now that we're going through something, we want to be spiritual people. And that is what God is saying. Search your heart. Search your heart. Search inside of you. It's introspective you know, searching of our inside of us. Um, because what tribulations and trials that allows us to get to the reality and reveals who we are for real. Because tribulations in life, they, they they keep us from denying the reality of who we are and they reveal who we are really. And we are close to God and close to His faithfulness that causes me and, and guides me to know who God is in my life and to know who God is. Tribulation guides me to have a tribulation with God. So then, to examine our faith, you know, as a type of discipline, correction. How are we behaving? Are we committed to remain firm in our trust in Christ? Are we committed? To remain strong and to have our trust in God. Or have we gone astray or fallen off from, from following God in His direction? i got to say this again, church. Are we committed to remain firm during this time? Trusting that the Lord is, the, is Christ in our lives? Or are we dragged by the world everywhere? You know, out of direction from God. And Paul, he encouraged the Corinthians and, and told them something very important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, touch yourselves. Touch yourselves. Listen to this. And Paul said, test yourselves. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. The one who knows, uh, let us search our own hearts and let us come back to God. And let us search our heart and our ways and let us search and return to God. In 2 Corinthians 12, the search yourself, search yourself. If you are in the faith, and test ourselves. And look at the recommendation that God's word instructs us. Let us search ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. Evaluate our own lives. And in other words, search yourself internally and unveil what is in your life. What motivates you and what guides you. And I'm going to say, repeat this. Paul is pretty much saying that we need to examine ourselves, right? Examine yourself internally and discover what impulses you, what motivates you, what attracts you. And, and, and if this, everything else does that for you except God, then that's not a good thing. Then God is not, in, that God is not there. Because God should be your, your, your motivating factor in your life. God should be the motivating factor of your life, of any situation that you are in. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your life. God should be the motivating factor in any situation of your life. 
and we have accepted Christ as our Savior, right? Remember, therefore, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God wants us to be vessels. And this is a problem of many people. God wants us to be vessels that are clean that he can use. And let me tell you something. The the exam is this. To see if God can find something in us. That God can find something in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God wants. God wants us to be vessels who are clean. That God can be, use us. Utensils that God can use that are clean. Because we cannot allow any of the filth of the world. That they can come to be flourishing in their lives instead. And many people are stuck. Many people are only imitating a type of spirituality that is non-existent in their lives. In church, and it is a good thing, it's beautiful to see churches that will be full. And are we really searching God for real? We need holiness. It is time. God is calling us to be people who are holy. And let us stop. And we're going to say it on Sunday. If you want to see me next Sunday and next, next Friday, it's up to you. But I got I to gotta say the truth. I got to say how it is. I got to say it. We got to come back to God. Man, we can't be hypocrites. We, 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 we call ourselves Christians and we're, we're mad at everybody. We're upset at everybody. You know, we're... You know, gospel that's no good, preaching it. And we're going from place to place, jumping from place to place, and go from church to church. And, and when somebody says something and you don't like it, you get mad and you leave that church. These are dirty utensils, deceiving other people with physical appearance, but inside there is garbage, it's filth. So God is getting their attention. God is trying to get their attention. God is using this adversity. So that you and I may learn. God bless you. I love you, man. But I got to say how it is. I got to speak the truth. God is calling you. God wants our attention. And the things of the past, the failures of the past, the sins, you got to let go. You got to come to God. God wants to free you. God wants you to get out of that bondage. God wants to, in the psychological, and the emotional, and in the spiritual. A lot of people have shackles in their lives. Chains. How many chains, spiritually speaking, do many people have? People have a grudge against other people, lacking of forgiveness, a lack of this, a lack of that, upset because of this and that. And people say, okay, I'm going to go to heaven like that. The Bible says that without holiness, then no one can see God. Therefore, we cannot be ignorant to that fact. The Bible says that without Holiness that no one can see God. And I believe that, praise God, that when we become complacent and we then start to accept our past as it is part of our identity, that we have accepted then the incorrect perspective in our lives. Remember, we are a new creation, right? The old things have passed. And they are new. We are people who are new. And as new people, we need to, you know, be here. There's no you know, person that we should be far from him. It is impossible for God to, you know, we are God's property. We are God's property. The old has passed. The new has come to you. And this is precisely, you know, the, the news, uh, new news of life that God provides to us. The old has passed. We are in the new. We have a new hope in the middle of the adversity, in the middle of all the adverse situation and distress in life. God is there because God has made you new. The old things have passed. The, the lesson of, of life guides us to a change in conduct. I said the first thing. For how God uses adversity. He gets your attention. Adversity. Number two. Adversity 
you know, guides you to get closer to God. And adversity conducts us to a change in our conduct. If you don't change that attitude, if you don't change that conduct, even though you're going through what you're going through, after you have gone through what you have gone through, man, you have not changed. No, you have, there has to be a change. What does God have to do with you then? If you have not understood what you have gone through, then God has to take you from this world so that you can be better off with Him and you not be lost. And a lot of the times, that's what God does. God, a lot of the times, He shortens our life here on earth to be able to take us with Him because He knows that if we stay in this world the way we are, that we're going to be lost. We're going to be lost. We're going to perish. And our true identity, I want you to listen to this. The school professors frequently, they have some objectives, you know, that are some behavioral type of, you know, objectives, you know, in their classes as they are chatting with your class. And this type of, of, of objective denotes in a correct way the conduct that the teacher desires for a teacher to receive, a student to receive, or a pupil. And the reason why the teacher does these types of objectives is that they may have a better um, conduct, a better behavior, uh, and for them to be a better student throughout all of this teaching. Uh, so as a trial you know, that we go through, I believe that God is going to be in favor of us because we are in the trial of adversity, and we have learned the lesson. How many people have learned the lesson? I don't know. So let me tell you something. The lessons that the Lord teaches us through the adversity are for that type of purpose, you know, to cause in us a change in our conduct. What it does, it causes a type of of, of change in our conduct. I said a change of conduct. And that provokes that type of conduct. And you did something evil or sinful that had created in you a type of attitude or conduct that is incorrect before God or um, unpleasant to God, then God is going to change that attitude, change that behavior. God is going to have to change it. You're going to have to change it because I have to be able to, to show and display that image of Christ. Because if I am a new creation, then I got to have a better attitude in my life. I got to have a better behavior, better conduct, better actions. There has to be a change in our conduct. We have to have a better conduct, better attitude. Because Christ, as we display the conduct, the behavior of God, of Christ in our lives, and what God does, and He is pleased in our attitude. He is pleased in us. And he puts me into grace. The grace comes upon me with other people around me. So it is not enough for God is trying to get your attention that we spend time to search our own lives in adversity. All of this is not enough. That God desires to get our attention or for us to spend some time to, you know, search our own lives. And we should allow God to access our lives freely for the Holy Spirit to be able to take hold of us from the smallest toe on our, the smallest toe on our foot to the smallest hair on our head, so that Christ can flow inside of us. And there's good. Some people get emotional. Man, they get so excited because the presence of the Holy Spirit and glory to God for that. But let me tell you, there's not the fullness of the control of the Holy Spirit in their lives. When they are in a state of of enjoyment or, or self fulfillment they enjoy and wow the presence of God when they feel in the presence of God and when they come out of it they're like the most you know, people in the flesh they're in the flesh you see them in a dimension of the spirit for a moment when they leave the church man they're bad mouth the bad hygiene bad wow pleasant when they talk because they have not processed the belief and what guides them in their spiritual life if the belief in the bad behavior or conduct, you may say to yourself, I don't like that person, I don't like so-and-so, then I had to improve my relationship 
with that person so that the Holy Spirit may flow into my life. Let us not be deceived. We need to start living in that deceit. And say, whoa, yeah, yes, I feel good, yes. You got to stop that, man. You got to submit to God's conduct. God is teaching us a lesson this year. God is getting our attention through this adversity. Whether you like it or you don't like it, we are being subject to God's discipline. And not only us, the Christians, the whole world. God is telling the whole world that He is God. And there is no one like Him. That it doesn't matter whether it's the president or whoever whoever it may be. He, to know that there's only one God. And every all creation has to be submitted to the power of God. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. There's no science or scientist or leader, governor, president. No. God is God. Let us put our eyes on God. God is correcting this nation here. The mightiest nation on the earth is the most useless nation on the earth. Because the one who doesn't get the glory to God is going to have a problem with God. You got to give God the glory. We got to give God the glory. We got to be careful, church. So let us learn to observe. Let us learn to observe. Let us learn to hear and to search for his guidance, his direction. Let us hear. Let us listen to him. Let him be a guidance for us. We can see a problem. Or we can think that. How should we respond? How is it that I should respond in confronting any issue of life? Or whether we do something that we shouldn't do, or we do not pay attention to what God has to say to us? I want you to hear this. Let us not change our reaction and our conduct. We will never benefit from the adversity. We will not be able to have the results that they are intended for our lives by God. If we do things how we feel like it, if we do things how we want to do things, and let me tell you something. When we come back to church to gather and congregate, if we're going to be the same people, there got to be a difference in us. There got to be a change in us. There has to be something that change in us. A wake-up call for us. Let me tell you something. There has to be. And let me tell you something. We learn our lessons, but let me tell you. If you do what's good, you're going to receive good. If you do something that is bad, there's going to be consequences. And those consequences, you're going to have to receive them too. we got to take it. And Jesus Christ himself, to be able to withstand all of the burdens that come to our lives, he will help us to take our burdens to the cross and that we can come to Him once and for all. He does everything God does for our well-being. God knows how the pain of life opens up a way up again to Him. And we're able to come back to Him through that pain. We come to become attached to God. And that pain, that suffering, how that pain and suffering opens up a way through to healing, total healing, and spiritual uh, revitalization in our lives. And the God, all of those internal things in our life that is filled, that needs to be rid of, that you need to change, and you would know that every adversity has come to you so that you may become a person who is more mature, and it is a person who is closer to God in that adversity. I want to tell you something. And I want to finish with this. David in Psalm 38. After he knew that God forgave him. After he knew that he had once again access to God. He knew that his heart was clean. He ended up his prayer with three petitions. One of them was, Lord, do not forsake me. Do not forsake me. Verse 21, Psalms 38, 21. Three petitions in his prayer. Oh, Lord, do not forsake me. Number one. Be not far from me, secondly. Be not far from me. Stay close to me. 
And the third petition in his prayer: "Come quickly to help me. Come and help me." And I want to finish with this prayer. Wow. Lord, do not forsake me. Lord, I ask you for you to stay close to me. And this, this, this is a prayer that you should pray. And wow, oh Lord, do not be far from me. Oh my God, come quickly to help me, oh Lord, my Savior. The third thing again, Lord, hurry, come and help me. Come here, Lord, and help me. Oh wow! And the key to all of this is this: that if we don't pay attention to God's word, then we're going to have to feel the weight, you know, of His correction. We're going to feel the weight of His correction. And I can imagine David; he felt the pain, the hurt, the sadness in his life. He felt so lonely, and he didn't feel what to do. And in that moment of desperation, he comes to invite God and says, "Lord, do not forsake me. Lord, I ask you to not be far from me, to remain with me, remain with me, God. Do not." Grow far from me, God. I need you. I need your company, God. I need you with me. I need you to be my paraclete. Be with me. Hold on to me. I want to feel your hand. I want to feel, you know, the fingers in your hand, God. So I maybe feel rested and assured, God. And thirdly, come quickly to help me. Tell the Lord right now. Come quickly. To help me, tell the Lord right there in your home, Lord, I want to search my heart. I know that there are things that you don't like, God, that you're not pleased with. I want to change my life. I want you to be with me, God. I want you to remain with me, God. Don't leave me. Forgive me. I have been very difficult to work with God, and forgive me because. I have gotten upset many times, and during that moment of frustration, I have said things that I shouldn't have said. And I know that as you're praying that God is going to give you a helping hand. And it is sad to see so many people that their hearts, you know, are very far from God. Ask God right now. Ask the Lord. Invite him into your heart, Lord. Pray this: I accept you as my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Once in my life, I used to congregate in your church, God, but I want to come back to you. The Lord has His open arms for you. This morning, if you don't have a place to congregate, Seven Eleven Fourth Street here in West Liberty, Iowa. Um, we want to pray for you. We want to share the word of God with you. And I know that there are people that do not hear, you know, other people's voice. Many people are going to say a lot of things. They're going to give you a lot of recommendations in life, this and that. But don't listen to their voices. Listen to God's voice. Come to His house, and God is going to be an impact for you. Lopez family and、uh, Martinez Montelago,、uh, the loss of the, the father in their home, and let's pray for Evelyn and for this epidemic. You know, this man has passed from this COVID nineteen, and and we pray for this family that God may may give you know peace and help. Let's pray for Sister Esperanza and the praise for her brother. He's in the hospital. He had some heart problems. Father God, these people, you know, they commented and they're asking for prayer for their families and their loved ones and friends. And 
and they you know come to you because they know that you are going to be for them god that you're going to give them the strength the comfort the healing that they need but god many people that don't know you you know allow them to know you god through your holy spirit go to them right through their homes father god do a wonderful work in them not only for these families father god that we're praying for but the whole world our president our governors our leadership um, our teachers our our nurses uh, our our doctors father god or healthcare professionals that are risking their lives you know to help all the people who are sick but god and tend to them and many of them are, are, are you know separated from their families and, and there are people who are ill in the hospitals father god that are separated in the name of jesus christ in the situations that we are going through you know all the the national guard and the reserves to the military father god all of them bless them help and give them strength protect them that you may give them strength in the name of jesus i want to bless you this morning the lord bless you and keep you the lord let his face shine upon you have mercy on you he show his face before you and have place peace in you you will invoke the name of your god upon your family and god is going to bless you i bless you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit kisses to all of you a big hug to all of you i miss you church of god friends family and we can see each other here soon worshiping god together in unity here in the church God is going to has God has something good in store for you. Porque todo lo que hay dentro de mí necesita ser cambiado, Señor. Porque todo lo que hay Dentro de mi corazón Necesita más de ti Tu fidelidad Wow, God bless you. Um, strengthen him, give him strength, um, give him an embrace. You know, in the stillness of night, as he's feeling lonely at times, God protect him. Anything that is happening around him, his family, bless his family, Heavenly Father, him, his 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 kids, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God bless you.
this, God. We want to do a prayer. and Thank you so much for you know, joining us today um, in this time of you know, worship and this time of, you know, of getting close together and, and praying and, and worshiping the God. Many churches don't have the technology. Um, they don't have the ability to be able to um, you know, share the service with you uh, online. So we will continue to do this. Just pray together, Father God. We give thanks to you. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God. Because to this moment, we can say that you are with us. That to this moment, the Lord has helped us. We give thanks to you, God. We give honor to your name. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And once again, bless my brothers and sisters. Bless all the friends and family that are in, um, in their homes in a special way. And above all, God, um, bless our pastors. Um, the blessing of God be with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.